friends, students, members of the Cardigan community. We gather with pride, gratitude, and excitement. Suspended in time between our students' past and our graduates' future. As we experience this moment together, let us draw from the many faiths and philosophies present today. Please join me in prayer or contemplation. Whether we understand our world through the mysteries of God, the beauty of nature, or the elegance of science, we now ask for presence of mind as we gather with joy and gratitude. We ask that we be here while we're here, watching our boys grow into their gifts of knowledge and character, and joining in their sense of accomplishment and pride. We ask this in the name of all we believe. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome one and all to Cardigan Mountain School's 71st commencement exercises. It is indeed a beautiful day in New Hampshire. <laughs> I know that folks have traveled from near and far, from just down the road to all corners of the globe to be here today. Parents, grandparents, and siblings of our graduates, alumni, trustees, and so many more friends of Cardigan we are honored by your presence here today. I'd like to extend a special welcome and appreciation to Dave and Steph McCusker, who lovingly and faithfully led and served our school for nine years. <laughs> Cynthia and I are grateful for your support and friendship, and we're so glad you beat the familiar path back home to be with us today. To the young men of the class of 2017, I offer my heartfelt and sincere congratulations and thanks. As you've heard from the faculty and from your Cardigan brothers in the many ceremonies leading up to this day, your example of honest and thoughtful leadership and your clear commitment to making Cardigan a better school has been noticed and appreciated by all. The growth that you have attained at Cardigan is multifaceted. You have blossomed academically and intellectually. You've learned how to better manage your time, organize yourselves and your work, and achieve your best in classes. You've also learned the value of curiosity and inventiveness. Watch the latter two work for you in the years to come. You have physically developed into sturdy young men whom opponents fear because of your athletic skills and teamwork and respect because of your sportsmanship. You have developed your aesthetic muscles as well by painting, acting, singing, and playing before an appreciative community of patrons. Through chapel, community service, and the residential life programming, you have demonstrated a concern for the infinite and a care for the finite. By embracing our theme of pride of place and our lived allegiance to our core values of compassion, integrity, respect, and courage, you have made our school a more harmonious home for your younger Cardigan brothers who have benefited from your kindness and goodwill. No path through Cardigan is quite the same and few are linear. There is no one way to grow and succeed here. Indeed, it may well be that genuine success at Cardigan is the reflected and acted upon residue of somewhat smaller failures. That is how we all grow. That is how you have succeeded here on the point and how you will succeed anywhere your paths take you from here. For some, it takes time to realize and fully appreciate the significance of your cardigan experience. You may never live again in a community which, in which so many know and love you for who you are, warts and all, as much as we have here on the point. In a little over an hour, many of you boys will have tears in your eyes as you embrace each other for the last time. Your parents might be shedding some too. Let them flow, boys. Let them flow. That lump in your throat is your core telling you that something profound has occurred, and you'd be wise to surrender to it and celebrate it. Your parents' emotion, I can assure you, 
will come from a wellspring of pride and love, the depths of which cannot possibly be plumbed. Give each other a big hug and enjoy the moment. Gentlemen, as you say your goodbyes today, be sure to seek out the adults in, the, in this community who have impacted you. Thank the faculty for their excellence, for they are truly a remarkable group of people and you are fortunate to have worked and played with them. Don't be afraid and don't be embarrassed. They will love you for it and you will make their, you will make their day. Of course, also be sure to take a moment at some point today to thank your parents and families for giving you the, the gift of this extraordinary experience that is Cardigan Mountain School. They will love you for it too, and I have a feeling you've already made their day. This year has been made up of countless moments, the personal, quiet moments, and the noisy, public ones. You'll take them all with you when you leave today, boys, but they will also remain here. They will always be here, waiting for you to return. Boys, when you cross this stage and become Cardigan alumni, you will be joining a brotherhood that has been growing larger and stronger for the last 71 years. Your brothers, both present and past, are here with you now. They've always been here, and they'll be with you forever. Congratulations to this remarkable group of young men, the great class of 2017. Thank you. And now I have the honor of awarding commencement prizes. The Caldwell Prize. Determined by varsity coaches, the Caldwell Prize is awarded to the boy who has shown outstanding athletic achievement and sportsmanship. The Hinman Prize. Determined by faculty vote, the Hinman Prize is given annually in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Harold P. Hinman to the member of the school who, in the opinion of the faculty, by industrious application of his studies, through his attitude on the playing field, and by his behavior and integrity, most nearly approaches the ideals of manhood as conceived in the minds of the founders of Cardigan Mountain School. The 2017 Caldwell and Hinman Prizes are awarded to Oliver Cookson. The Faculty Prize. In his interactions with classmates, teammates, coaches, teachers, and faculty children, this young man displays an amazing level of sincerity and kindness. His perseverance, tenacity, drive, and commitment to Cardigan are impressive. For his kindness, integrity, tireless work ethic, and overall good nature, this Faculty Prize is awarded to Jack Bayreuther. The Faculty Prize. Ever since this student arrived at Cardigan three years ago, he has demonstrated a joyful commitment to all aspects of life here on The Point. He is a conscientious student who has made a laser-focused commitment to his studies. From day one, he has demonstrated an unselfish, quiet leadership within athletic circles and has been chosen as a team captain repeatedly by his coaches and teammates. As a dorm floor leader, he has the respect and admiration of his peers and faculty alike. For his unassuming leadership, his commitment to academics and his dedications to all things Cardigan, this faculty prize goes to Jung Ho Chang. The Dewar Prize. Given to the ninth grader who has earned the highest overall GPA, the Dewar Prize is awarded annually in honor of Dr. and Mrs. Cameron K. Dewar to the member of the senior class with the highest academic standing. The Founders Prize. Voted on by the faculty, the Founders Prize is awarded to the boy and the student body who has the will to complete any project, regardless of the difficulties encountered. 
without thought of personal gain, and whose objective is a job well done in the same approach that characterized the life of Harold P. Hinman, one of the founders of Cardigan Mountain School. The 2017 Dewar and Founders Prizes are awarded to Emrys L. Koo. The Faculty Prize. This young man's actions truly speak louder than words. Never one to seek out attention, he quietly leads by example. He lives, upholds, and sustains Cardigan's core values daily. His tireless, tireless work ethic and character make him a leader in the classroom, athletic field, and the dorm. A student athlete with unwavering commitment to excellence, he is an effort and achievement honor roll student and has won multiple awards for athletics. For these reasons and many more, this faculty prize is awarded to Ethan Cruzberg. The William Knapp Morrison Award. Determined by student body vote, the William Knapp Morrison Award is given to the senior who, in the opinion of the students, best exemplifies the spirit of Willie Morrison in academics, athletics, and as a campus citizen. Willie died during one summer while he was a student at Cardigan. This award is given to the student who most exemplifies his spirit. He had the ability to make every situation a positive one. Willie was a very happy boy whose positive energy was contagious. He loved Cardigan and all of his schoolmates, and he made them feel better just by being in their company. The 2017 William Knapp Morrison Award goes to Jack Roberts. Thank goodness for tents. <laughs> the faculty prize. This young man, this young man's greatest asset is his determination. He has developed exceptional work habits, including time management, organization, and engagement with the material. Even, uh, even more impressive, he is compassionately attuned to those around him. He is a resilient, sincere, and curious young man who seeks meaning in his relationships and joy in his learning. He is socially grounded, cooperative, and collaborative, and he is a prime example of the type of young man Cardigan Mountain School strives to produce. For his perseverance, selflessness, and his love of Cardigan, this faculty prize goes to Kazuma Hirata. faculty prize. This kind and loyal young man has experienced immense growth in his three years at Cardigan Mountain School. He is quiet, yet his quiet yet strong leadership presence has gained the respect of students and faculty alike. He is quick to take on any challenge, academically or athletically, with no fear or complaint, and does so with grace and determination, expecting no recognition in return. He truly embodies Cardigan's core values of compassion and integrity, respect and courage. He is a fantastic student and an even better human being. This faculty prize goes to Alex Strait. The Skibiski Memorial Award. Determined by faculty vote, this award is to be given as a memorial to Michael R. Skibiski, to that member of the senior class who has shown the greatest progress during his Cardigan years. The faculty are proud to award the 2017 Skibiski Memorial Award to Gray Medan.
the Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize. Determined by a vote of the ninth graders, the Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize is awarded by the class of 1989 to the senior who, in the opinion of his classmates, best upholds the tradition, spirit, and pride of Cardigan Mountain School, thus making every day a beautiful day in New Hampshire. The Panache Memorial Award. Determined by student body vote, the Panache Memorial Award is awarded annually by the class of 1959 as a memorial to Carl J. Panache, to that member of the senior class who, in the eyes of his fellow students, has achieved the best attained ideals of honesty, integrity, leadership, and general social and spiritual adjustment. The recipient of both the 2017 Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize and the Panache Memorial Award is Aidan Feely. Before you sit down, Aiden, let me uh, please join me, everyone, in welcoming Aiden Feely, Cardigan School leader, who will now share his personal reflections about his Cardigan experience. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Day, faculty, families, guests, and my fellow graduating Cardigan brothers. Welcome to the 2017 graduation, and thank you for making the effort to be here with us today. The theme of Cardigan this year was pride of place. When I look about Mount Cardigan, or gaze across the lake, or look out to all of you, my brothers, I take pride. I take pride in the lessons we have learned here. I take pride in the glorious opportunities we have had, allowing us to grow from boys to young men. In this community, we all have purpose. In this puzzle that is Cardigan, we are the pieces that complete the picture. We all fit perfectly into the Cardigan community. From the dawn climb to the sunset climb, we have bonded as brothers, shared our feelings, learned to cooperate and support each other, but most of all, have enjoyed the journey every step of the way. I do not think that I am alone in saying that my years at this wonderful place have been the best years of my life. I would like to congratulate all of you on your graduation because attending Cardigan is not easy. It takes commitment. We all know this place is challenging, but everything that we have done here, from picking up trash to being role models, it all has purpose. Cardigan is a place that will remain forever in our hearts. It is a place where I have learned from you and you have learned from me. Faculty, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your dedication you have put in to craft, to craft this class from mere boys to young men. I will never forget the lessons from Mr. Gray or Coach K. I know as a class we have learned a lot from each and every one of you and for that we owe you a debt of gratitude. Mr. and Mrs. Day, thank you for sharing your knowledge and opening our, your hearts to us, to all of us. Brothers, we have grown here at Cardigan, and as that time comes to an end, let us never forget our time on the point. As we move forward to new schools and experiences, let us take what we have learned here and use it to make our futures bright. Congratulations, and the best of luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden, both for your thoughtful reflections this morning and for your quiet, consistent, and mature leadership all year. It has been a pleasure to spend time with you every day, and we will miss having a feely at Cardigan. It is now my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Chief Justice of the United States, John G. Roberts, Jr. A graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Law School, Chief Justice Roberts' numerous accomplishments include serving as a law clerk for then Associate Justice William H. Rehnquist of the Supreme Court of the United States, whom he would succeed as Chief Justice 25 years later. Among many other notable and distinguished positions, the Chief Justice also served as Associate, associate Counsel to President Ronald Reagan and was appointed to the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit in 2003. President George W. Bush nominated him as Chief Justice of the United States, and he took his seat in September of 2005. But I guess one resume is pretty much like any other, right? <laughs> Perhaps Chief, Justice's, uh, Chief Justice Roberts' most impressive accomplishment was in marrying Jane. 
possessor of a distinguished legal career in her own right, and a person who has, in the last two years, become one of the great advocates for Cardigan Mountain School in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Jane, for all that you have done and do for Cardigan. The Chief Justice and Mrs. Roberts are also the proud parents of their daughter, Josie, and our own Cardigan Cougar, Jack, who very well may likely be the most uncomfortable person among us right now. <laughs> I have to admit uh, that I was, as I was preparing for this day, I have paused several times at the thought of this moment. It is not often that one has the opportunity and honor to introduce the Chief Justice of the United States. Heck, there have only been 17 of them in our nation's history. Earlier this spring, Cynthia and I visited the Chief Justice at his office in the, at the Supreme Court in Washington. As a historian and a bit of a Supreme Court junkie, you might imagine my excitement when I found myself entering the Chief Justice's private chambers. He invited us to sit on a worn leather Davenport, and as soon as we did, pointed out that we were sitting on the couch on which John Quincy Adams died. <laughs> I can assure you that my reaction was slightly less reposed than was JQA's when he last dented the cushions. <laughs> I was anxious to tell the Chief, Chief Justice how much I enjoyed reading, reading his tightly constructed, withering, but respectful dissent in the Arizona case, but instead I sat start straight in my seat while the Chief Justice introduced the cases to be heard that day and showed us the immensely thick briefs that the, that the justices uh, study to prepare for each case. At one point during our time together, I asked Chief Justice Roberts how he handles the awesome responsibility which accompanies his office. His response has stuck with me. I feel like I'm holding the reins of a horse, he said. I dare not pull on them too hard because I might discover that they aren't attached to anything. <laughs> I found this to be such an insightful appreciation for the delicate but precise juridical dance that the Chief Justice and his colleagues negotiate as, with the United States Constitution as their guide, historical precedents as reference points, and an astute sensibility of our evolving confederation, they endeavor to balance the immediate and far-reaching implications of their decisions. As one who thinks that the United States Constitution, in all of its purposeful ambiguity, is perhaps the most brilliant expression of democratic republicanism ever devised. I have some really exciting news to share for our graduates. When you receive your diploma in a few moments, it may feel a little thicker than it usually might. Um, <laughs> that is because, sorry, that is because tucked into your diploma, each of you will find a pocket-sized edition of the United States Constitution personally signed by Chief Justice Roberts. I, I urge you to read it. <laughs> and I know that this will be a keepsake that you will cherish for the rest of your lives. Fellas, this stuff doesn't happen. Enjoy it. While Chief Justice Roberts is an extraordinary American, John G. Roberts is an ordinary man. He is known to many in this community, not so much because of his job, but be because he is part of our Cardigan family. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court, at Cardigan you will always be Jack's dad first. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Chief Justice of the United States, John G. Roberts, Jr. Thank you very much. Rain, somebody said, is like confetti from heaven. <laughs> so even the heavens are celebrating this morning, uh, joining the rest of us at this wonderful commencement ceremony. Before we go any further, graduates, you have an important task to perform, because behind you are your parents and guardians. 
two or three or four years ago, they drove into Cardigan, dropped you off, helped you get settled, and then turned around and drove back out the gates. It was an extraordinary sacrifice for them. They drove down the trail of tears back to an emptier and lonelier house. They did that because the decision about your education they knew was about you. It was not about them. That sacrifice and others they made have brought you to this point. But this morning is not just about you. It is also about them. So I hope you will stand up and turn around and give them a great round of applause. Please. Now, when somebody asks me how the remarks at Cardigan went, I will be able to say they were interrupted by applause. <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2017. You've reached an important milestone. An important stage of your life is behind you. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you it is the easiest stage of your life, <laughs> but it is in the books. Now, while you've been at Cardigan, you have all been a part of an important international community as well. And I think that needs to be particularly recognized. También felicito a los graduados Cardigan de México y a todos los otros estudiantes internacionales. Su presencia como parte de la comunidad Cardigan la ha hecho un lugar más vibrante. Cardigan, Yorup Sang, Urobongye, Jin Sim Orin, Chikawa, Kiagnoe Malsim, Bonam Nida. Now, around the country today, at colleges, high schools, middle schools, <coughs> commencement speakers are standing before impatient graduates, and they are almost always saying the same things. They will say that today is a commencement exercise, it is a beginning not an end. You should look forward. And I think that is true enough. However, I think if you're going to look forward to figure out where you're going, it's good to know where you've been and to look back as well. And I think if you look back to your first afternoon here at Cardigan, perhaps you'll recall that you were lonely. Perhaps you will recall that you were a little scared, a little anxious. And now look at you. You are surrounded by friends that you call brothers, and you are confident in facing the next step in your education. It is worth trying to think why that is so. And when you do, I think you may appreciate that it was because of the support of your classmates in the classroom, on the athletic field, and in the dorms. And as far as the confidence goes, I think you will appreciate that it is not because you succeeded at everything you did, but because, with the help of your friends, you were not afraid to fail. And if you did fail, you got up and tried again. And if you failed again, you got up and tried again. And if you failed again, it might be time to think about doing something else. <laughs> but it was not just success but not being afraid to fail that brought you to this point. Now, the commencement speakers will typically also wish you good luck and extend good wishes to you. I will not do that, and I'll tell you why. From time to time in the years to come, I hope you will be treated unfairly so that you will come to know the value of justice. I hope that you will suffer betrayal because that will teach you the importance of loyalty. Sorry to say, but I hope you will be lonely from time to time so that you don't take friends for granted. I wish you bad luck again from time to time so that you will be conscious of the role of chance in life and understand that your success is not completely deserved and that the failure of others is not completely deserved either. And when you lose as you will from time to time, I hope every now and then your opponent will gloat over your failure. It is a way for you to understand the importance of sportsmanship. I hope you'll be ignored so you know the importance of listening to others. 
and I hope you will have just enough pain to learn compassion. Whether I wish these things or not, they're going to happen. And whether you, you benefit from them or not will depend upon your ability to see the message in your misfortunes. Now, commencement speakers are also expected to give some advice. They give grand advice and they give some useful tips. The most common grand advice they give is for you to be yourself. It is an odd piece of advice to give people dressed identically. <laughs> but you should, you should be yourself. But you should understand what that means. Unless you are perfect, it does not mean don't make any changes. In a certain sense, you should not be yourself. You should try to become something better. People say be yourself because they want you to resist the impulse to conform to what others want you to be. But you can't be yourself if you don't learn who you are. And you can't learn who you are unless you think about it. The Greek philosopher Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And while just do it may be a good motto for some things, it's not a good motto when it's trying to figure out how to live your life that is before you. And one important clue to living a good life is to not to try to live the good life. The best way to lose the values that are central to who you are is frankly not to think about them at all. So that's the deep advice. Now some tips as you get ready to go to your new school. Over the last couple of years, I've gotten to know many of you young men pretty well, and I know you are good guys. But you are also privileged young men. And if you weren't privileged when you came here, you're privileged now because you have been here. My advice is don't act like it. When you get to your new school, walk up and introduce yourself to the person who is raking the leaves, shoveling the snow, or emptying the trash. Learn their name and call them by their name during your time at the school. Another piece of advice, when you pass by people you don't recognize on the walks, smile, look them in the eye, and say hello. The worst thing that will happen is that you will become known as the young man who smiles and says hello. <laughs> and that is not a bad thing to start with. You've been at a school with just boys. Most of you will be going to a school with girls. I have no advice for you. <laughs> the, the last bit of advice I'll give you is very simple, but I think it could make a big difference in your life. Once a week, you should write a note to someone not an email, a note on a piece of paper. It will take you exactly 10 minutes. Talk to an adult, let them tell you what a stamp is. <laughs> you can put the stamp on the envelope. Again, 10 minutes once a week. I will help you right now. I will dictate to you the first note you should write. It will say, dear, fill in the name of a teacher at Cardigan Mountain School. Say, I have started at this new school. We are reading blank in English. Football or soccer practice is hard, but I'm enjoying it. Thank you for teaching me. Put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and send it. It will mean a great deal to people who, for reasons most of us cannot contemplate, have dedicated themselves to teaching middle school boys. <laughs> As I said, that will take you exactly 10 minutes a week. By the end of the school year, you will have sent notes to 40 people. 40 people will feel a little more special because you did. And they will think you are very special because of what you did. Now, what else is going to carry that dividend during your time at school? Enough advice. I would like to end by reading some important lyrics. I cited the uh, Greek philosopher Socrates earlier. These lyrics are from the great American philosopher, Bob Dylan. <laughs> They're almost 50 years old. He wrote them for his son, Jesse, who he was missing while he was on tour. 
They list the hopes that a parent might have for a son and for a daughter. There are also good goals for a son and a daughter. The wishes are beautiful, they're timeless, they're universal. They're good and true, except for one. It is the wish that gives the song its title and its refrain. That wish is a parent's lament. It's not a good wish. So these are the lyrics from Forever Young by Bob Dylan. May God bless you and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung and may you stay forever young. May you grow up to be righteous. May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and be strong, and may you stay forever young. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of changes shift. May your heart always be joyful, may your song always be sung, and may you stay forever young. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice Roberts, for your extraordinary service to and for this country for your insightful and inspirational reflections and for being with us today. I now have the distinct privilege of introducing the chair of Cardigan's Board of Trustees, Mr. Hank Holland. Mr. Holland has served on Cardigan's Board since, uh, since 2010. Hank is the father of Hayden, currently a student at Southern Methodist University in Dallas, who graduated from Cardigan in 2012, Corbin, who graduated in 2015 and attends Episcopal School in Virginia, and Fulton, who we hope to see on the point very soon. <coughs> For the first year in any head of school's tenure, the relationship between the head and the board chair must be a special one. Despite living a continent away in California and busy with his career and family, Hank is a regular visitor on the point. I have found Hank Holland to be a patient listener, wise counselor, and unflinching supporter of Cardigan Mountain School. It is with great respect that I introduce my boss. <laughs> and it is with deep gratitude that I introduce my friend and mentor, Mr. Hank Holland. Good morning. Mr. Day, thank you for the very kind introduction. It's a pleasure and an honor to work alongside the trustees, the administration, and the faculty at Cardigan. I always enjoy returning to Cardigan. It's a special treat to be here for commencement a culminating milestone event, a celebration that marks the closing of one chapter and the starting of another. And for our boys, it's a rite of passage. Before I continue with my remarks, I'd like to acknowledge some special members of our community. Though Mr. Day already welcomed a number of them, I would feel remiss if I didn't extend my thanks. First, I'd like to take a moment, though they were unable to join us today, to acknowledge the remarkable lifetime of service of Bev and Norm Wakeley, the much beloved former head of school. Norm passed away earlier this year. And as Chris mentioned, Cardigan will host an event tomorrow to celebrate his life and his dedication to enriching the lives of our boys. Bev hopefully will hear this and uh, know that we love you, we love your family, and we're so appreciative for all that you and Norm did over the years. <clears throat> Next, Dave and Steph McCusker. Welcome home. We miss your presence and we think of you often. Your promise of getting to know our boys and of loving our boys is your enduring legacy. It's good to see you. <clears throat> Moving on, it's always a privilege to be at Cardigan and it's a particular privilege to speak again at commencement. But it's a humbling honor to share the dais with Chief Justice John Roberts. 
excuse me, I've enjoyed getting acquainted with John, Jane, and Jack. We're fortunate to have them as part of our community and we're indebted to him for so ably serving our country. Thank you. As we culminate Chris's first year of head of school, I'd like to thank Chris and Cynthia. Though I haven't had a chance to spend as much time with Phoebe, Charlie and Henry were at Cardigan with my sons Hayden and Corbin. They're incredible young men. The days are an incredible family and we're fortunate to have Chris at the helm. And finally, would all the faculty please stand and remain standing. These are the remarkable men and women who are the essence of Cardigan. They've committed to share their lives seven days a week 24 hours a day with our boys. They've taught, coached, and mentored our boys in the classroom, on the field, at mealtime, and in the dorms. Each time that I return to campus, I'm inspired by your capacity to care and for you taking the time and making the effort to get to know our boys and to love our boys. Thank you for all that you did. And of particular note, last year we celebrated Mr. Ramos spending his 40th year at Cardigan. And this year we had the privilege of celebrating Mr. Wimhart's 40th anniversary. <laughs> As I reflected on my message to our graduating boys, I reflected on the occasional letters that I've written to my sons. Letters that were written at seminal times of my life, of their life, or at various points of history of our country. As a parent, our love is pure, our motives are simple, and our faith is unwavering. Though my boys have stumbled, made mistakes, and fallen short, I've always tried to be there with love, understanding, and support. Not without stern rebuke, but with absolute unconditional love. My oldest son Hayden left Cardigan to return home to Marin Catholic High School. As is tradition, he attended a Kairos retreat his senior year. As part of the experience, significant people in his life, family, friends, coaches, teachers, were invited to write letters that would be shared with him on the retreat. In my letter, I shared the many things that I admired about him, the many proud moments, and I shared these hopes with Hayden, and I have the same hopes for our boys. I wrote, I have so many wishes, hopes, and dreams for you. Amongst them, I hope you'll be mindful of your good fortune and opportunities in life. Walk through life with a spirit of gratitude, of humbleness. Be a gentle man. You've been given a strong, likable, admirable personality. I hope that you will lead with a quiet confidence Ever be mindful of your actions and their consequence. You have an incredible capacity to care for others, to empathize, to show compassion. I hope that you will show up for family, for friends, and for those who have perhaps been forgotten. One of your greatest strengths is your enthusiasm for life. I hope that you will direct your enthusiasm and passion towards purposeful pursuits, for I believe that a lifetime pursuit of purpose gives life meaning. And I believe through living a life of meaning, we find happiness and contentment. I love American history. In preparing my remarks, I read dozens of historical letters from great Americans to their children. Some were grounded in pragmatic lessons. John D. Rockefeller Jr., the son of the founder of Standard Oil and its vast fortune, in 1920, wrote a letter to his 14-year-old grandson. Regarding allowance, he wrote, allowance will be set at $1.50 per week. If you perform your chores and are responsible with money, the weekly allowance will be increased by 10 cents per week, but not to exceed $2. 
If you neglect your responsibilities, your allowance will be docked by 10 cents a week. 20% of your allowance is to be used for benevolence, charity. 20% of your allowance is to be saved. By the way, adjusted for inflation, that allowance today would be $30 per week. F. Scott Fitzgerald in 1933 wrote a letter to a 12 -year, his 12-year-old daughter while she was away at camp. As an aside, though we remember F. Scott Fitzgerald as an American icon and literary genius, his books, including The Great Gatsby, were both critical and financial disappointments. <clears throat> he wrote to his daughter, I am glad that you are happy, but I never believe much in happiness. I never believe much in misery either. All I believe is that life rewards virtue. Similar to my thoughts of living a life of purpose. He goes on to list things to worry about and those things not to worry about. Worry about courage. Worry about doing the next right thing. Don't worry about popular opinion. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about growing up. Don't worry about failures. Don't worry about disappointments. And now for the moms in the audience, perhaps the most poignant advice, a letter from Abigail Adams to her son, John Quincy Adams, before he died on the sofa. <laughs> in 1779, John Quincy Adams voyaged across the Atlantic with his nine-year-old and 12-year-old sons. America was fighting the War of Independence, and John Adams had been asked to serve as a minister in France. The trip was treacherous and the ship almost sank. Moreover, had the ship been captured by the British, surely he and his sons would have been imprisoned. Abigail writes, these are times in which a genius would wish to live. It is not in the still calm of life that great characters are formed. The habits of a vigorous mind are formed in contending with difficulties. This, I believe, is why Cardigan is so important why our mission and our values are so important and so relevant today, why the formative middle school years are so important. I hope that each of you feel that we, the Cardigan community, have gotten to know you. And I hope that each of you feel that we, the Cardigan community, have loved you. At the same time, I hope that each of you has struggled at times. I hope that each of you has experienced disappointment. I hope that each of you has failed fallen short, because it's through these experiences we find our true north. We find a strength and a resilience that we heretofore were unaware of. We learn to do the next thing, even when no one is watching. We learn to be truthful and to have courage. Through these times, each of us develop our values, our compass. Your parents have made tireless efforts to instill their values. And the Carnegie community has modeled compassion, integrity, respect, and courage. But you will define and continually refine the most important asset you will ever have, your character. Cardigan class of 2017, congratulations. You're an amazing group of young men, and I know that you will go on to do great things. I'm certain that you will leave the point, embark on a new and exciting chapter in your life, Remember us. Remember your cardigan brothers. Stay connected. And as Coach Marion would say, help the other fella. We're very proud of you and we'll always be cheering for you. And now I believe it's time for diplomas. Thank you. Emilio Alvarez Mendoza. Alfredo Ayu Karam. <laughs> Antoine Ayub Karam. <laughs> JP Barroso Rivas.
Jackman Shah Bayrutha. Shane August Bush. Mateo Kenitso Kenteas. Jung Ho Chang. Brendan Patrick Clark. Tyler William Conklin. Matthew James Connor. Oliver Straight Cookson. Samuel Thomas Costello. Liam Michael Curtis. Derek Dunn. Peter Viktorovich Dwyer. Emerist August Elku. Akar Escamilla Gomez. Kyle Fuller. McDonald Orson Godowski. Justin Antonio Greenberg. Jose Maria Hernandez Vasquez. Trip Hindle. Kazuma Hirata. Jo Yuen Ho. Daniel Zhang. Jingu Rogan Kang. Sean Kim. Ethan Blood Cruzberg.
Adam Lee. Leanne Shao. Grayson Michael Madden. Patricio Manitou Moret. George Jeff Menon the third. Peter Michelson. Young Q Min <laughs> Jaywan Moon <laughs> Roberto Morales Gomez Del Campo. Steven Sven Novello. <laughs> Ryan Peak. <laughs> Zachary Andrew Papa Petros. Christopher Anand Smeaton Parker. John Avery Parsons. Matthew James Pecora. Gage Robert Perry. Aiden Michael Feely. Carlos Priede Vasquez. Quinn Primo the fourth. Alexander Cook Ramsey. Brandon John Riley. Patrick Quinn Riley. Yeah. 
think this video is <laughs> <laughs> John Glover Roberts III. <laughs> Shinichiro Sato. William Grayson Shaw. Cameron Angelo Sherman. Alex Neil Strait. <laughs> Charles Sun. Ryan Quinn Tarmy. <laughs> Casper Verne Weisenen. <laughs> Wu Bai E. Hyun Ung Yoon. Alejandro Zoria. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2017. Please join me in prayer or contemplation. We ask that our graduates go forth for good work. 
We ask that they tirelessly seek the common good, that they find the strength always to live up to and according to the core values of their alma mater. And we ask that each life be a blessing to all. We depart for a new beginning. We accept the challenge of a new path. We trust the enduring spirit of this community, founded on the principles of compassion, integrity, respect, and courage. We believe that last year's words belong to last year's language, and next year's words await a new voice. For to have made an end is to make a beginning. Amen.